Hello, I'm back again. This is number five. Uh, I ended the last video with me scratching my head about end float on the lay shaft. Uh, in effect, I had negative end float. I couldn't uh, tighten down the Kickstarter housing. So I've had a little think about that and I realized that I made a mistake in the shim stack, which I put in, which I thought would be a good baseline. Uh, there's another there's a several adjustment elements in this one of them is that you can put a gasket on this uh, and that will lift this away from the casing a little bit more it was designed by Velocet to be metal on metal and that's what I'm going to try and aspire to right let me just uh, explain that the thrust pad that lies in the Kickstarter housing is actually meant to touch the end of the gearbox shaft I'd overlooked that I thought in effect the thrust was fed into the bronze bush so that means that the bush itself can float around there's one little complication I need to confirm is okay though and I'm going to bring the camera in a little bit closer to show you that right this is right I'm just going to demonstrate the way I've been checking the end float on this if I put my set square there and just put a that just about go in and yet if I put the 23 one thou extra it's dragging now so I'll call that 22 thou what that means is that this bush can move 23 thou the reason it can move is because the <clears throat> this thrust pad is going to be located there and that in effect this bush can move up and down so I have to just check now that if this moves as far as it can that it doesn't allow this special washer to lift off the lay shaft and come on disengaged from these splines so I just need to measure that looking at it visually I think it's going to be okay Well, that's almost a tenth of an inch. Call it 95 thou, 96, 97 thou. That's fine. If that goes on and stays put, that will, even if it moves a little bit, it won't move so much that it becomes disengaged from the splines. So that's the first step. That's a green light on that one. There's another important element in terms of end float control and shimming. And this is this gasket. Uh, a thinner gasket is available, but this is the standard gasket. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try and get all this together. Right. I've just put the little thrust pad on the end of this lay shaft. I'm going to put the Kickstarter housing on now and tighten that up and see what happens. I don't think there's a gap there which is a start so let me get some bolts in that last verification that I've done uh, is very important and it means that as long as that thrust pad is within a couple of thou of the end of the shaft the bush cannot move far enough to allow that splined washer to disengage from the shaft itself so that's something uh, which I'm very pleased about I'm just going to roll this gearbox over now and uh, try and ensure that or try and examine the amount of end float obviously it's difficult to see uh, and I'm half tempted to do some tests by actually looking for interference by adding shims to actually take up some space until this thing jams up that may well be the most uh, scientific way of of actually establishing what the end flows truly is i don't know if you can hear this but that lay shaft's got about i don't know a millimeter of movement so i need to creep up on that in a much more determined fashion i've just uh, stripped this down there are the pins that were in it no wrong way these are the pins 
these are about 63 long well sorry let me give you the full decimal that's five and point five six two and these ones over here are point five eight five so I'm going to fit these ones in. They're a little bit longer. That'll close up some of that end float. And then I'll see what uh, what it looks like. But when I was able to put my finger in there and clunk the lace shaft to and fro, <laughs> that's far too much. Right, things have moved on a little bit. I've taken this apart. I've now decided that I need to add something very thin in between this boss, uh, this Kickstarter boss and the gearbox. And then I think I will be happy. Uh, I'm going to make a little washer or a gasket out of, uh, out of ordinary paper. Now that's reading zero. Here's a piece of paper. And yes, that's about two and a half, three thou. That's uh, it'll probably squash down a little bit. So I'm going to experiment with that. And what I'm going to do, you've all seen this before on the web where you just ever so gently use a sharp edge. finishing this off it isn't always necessary to bash the surface sometimes just pressing the gasket material up against the sharp edge is enough right, that should go through there right I shall now install this and uh, check the end float again right this is the end of the lay shaft rigmarole I've now put this back together I've got the thicker gasket uh, the thin gasket here is 10 thou thinner, so I decided not to use that. Uh, I've used the slightly longer pins in the Kickstarter housing and I've cut a paper gasket to go between the Kickstarter housing and the end cover. And all of that goes from just a slight sense of binding to virtually no sense of binding whatsoever and free rotation. So I'm calling that a success. All I need to do now is uh, think about taking all this apart and uh, moving on to the next stage. Yes, getting there. I've taken both of the shafts apart. There, there are four little circlips. Uh, I've left this one on the lay shaft. Uh, there's several bronze bushes and in the sleeve gear you can see that. Uh, there are some needle roller bearings and a little seal. So the instructions give a, a very sequential, simple, do this, do that, fit this next, and so on and so forth. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm just about to start uh, showing you some, or recording some of the gearbox build. Uh, right at the beginning, I mounted the gearbox as it has been in the past in the vise, it's secure and I put the sleeve gear in and I put the first the lay shaft and the largest diameter gear on the lay shaft they're in the gearbox now kind of basic stuff I didn't waste time videoing that and the other thing you have to do is you have to insert the main shaft up through the sleeve gear and then you have to brick it up underneath so that it doesn't keep falling out uh, a couple of other things I need to mention first of all when I got this kit I didn't get a manual with it or an assembly instruction and I didn't get the appropriate nuts for the main shaft which are half inch by 16 TPI 
uh, very fortunately a long time ago I found some instructions and I saved them on my computer but since some of these videos have gone out <clears throat> one of the people who's enjoyed looking at them apparently has been good enough to send me an electronic copy of the of the instruction manual so it's available and uh, it's there if anyone wants it you, I'm happy to email a copy as you can see I've used a box and some packing to ensure that the main shaft here doesn't fall out right this is the first of the selectors going in that's going onto the main shaft with that uh, selector engaged trouble is I think I need that slack to get these uh, selector pins in Right. Oh, there it is. Right, that's in. Right, that's in there. Time for another circlip. There you are. Can we have a splined washer? And another gear. Right, by my count that's all of the that's all of the circlips in place all engaged I've had a slight screw up there I put on these two gears together they should have gone on separately and now this one needs to go on here so I'm just gonna encourage that down Right, I'm just gonna I'm gonna run out of battery in a minute. I'll have to have a little battery recharge. Stand by. Right, I've just got that gear in. I'm just gonna put this one in now. And that's blind washer. And the circlip again.
Right, we're almost done. And uh, I'm just going to put these final few parts together. It goes in there. Now that's secured. And then the next one is this gear here. And then there's this one, the Kickstarter. And the kick the splined washer. And then the next thing is the selector shaft. I'll have to realign that. Hold on a minute. Nearly there, nearly there. Ah, that selector fork has come out of the shaft of the select engagement. That's it. It's in now. Okay. Back in business again. That's it. And by the way, all of these selector forks are numbered. This is number three, the third one to go in. So that goes on there. And then this one goes in there. And just make sure you put these in the right way. There's a, a ledge there which will help you lever them out. This is the end of video five. I've enjoyed building the gearbox up and I hope you enjoy me looking at me doing it. Uh, the next video will probably be the end of the gearbox sequence in terms of uh, building it. Then I've got to test it. I'm, plan to, I'm planning to mo mount it on the lathe and uh, motor it and make sure that it changes through all the gears and so on. Uh, that'll be a bit of fun and you're welcome to come along and have a look at that. But uh, so far, if you've borne with me so far, thank you for that. And uh, I'll try and get number six done just as soon as I possibly can, because I want to get this thing uh, into the bike.